Good morning. Welcome back to my Learn with Tom Lee. Espanol Essential, the Spanish Essential, 西班牙文基礎 Los adjetivos demostrativos, the demonstrative adjective, 表示形容詞 Los adjetivos demostrativos, the demonstrative adjectives indicate or point out the person. Place or things to which a speaker is referring, such as this shirt or that pair of pants. Demonstrative adjectives persist and agree in number and genders with the nouns they modify. In Spanish, you select the demonstrative adjective according to the distance of the noun from the speaker. The table 2.1 represents demonstrative adjectives and address this distance issue. In this table, you can see this is the number singular or plural, singular or plural, singular or plural, and the demonstrative adjective with masculine noun or feminine nouns, and this is the meaning of it. This is the distance from the person who speaks. For example, singular masculine este is this, and singular feminine esta is this. And near to or directly concerned with the speaker, and the plural masculine this is estos, and the plural feminine this is esta. For the that, the singular masculine is ese, and singular feminine is esa. For that, not particularly near to or directly concerned with the speaker. This means it's more far away from the speaker. And the plural of that masculine is eso, and feminine is esa, those. And if the speakers in the group, when they are talking about things that is far from them, in singular that is agal, and feminine singular that is agaya. It's far from or not directly concerned with the speaker. This should we have s with the speaker. With two of them, right? So the plural masculines of those is agayos, and plural feminines of those is agaya. Unos ejemplos. Let's see some examples. These pants are short, and this shirt is large. And the noun pants is plural form masculine, so we use the estoy for this. We can see from here the plural form of masculine. This is estoy. Estoy pantalones son gordos y esta camisa. And camisa is singular form of this. So we use esta. We can see from here is the singular feminized form of this is esta. Y esta camisa es larga. And this shirt is large. So you have to very careful with the nouns is masculine, plural, or singular, feminized. Example two: I have to speak to that girl. The girl is the singular feminized noun, so we use the that is esa, and we can see this from this table. The singular feminized of that is esa. So tengo que hablar con esa muchacha. I have to speak. To that girls, y esos muchachos, and muchacho is masculine plural. So those we use eso. We can also see from this table the plural form of those masculine is eso. Y esos muchachos ahí ahí mean there. Those boys there. I speak to that girls and those boys there. Tengo que hablar con esa muchacha y Eso muchachos ahí. Those country are large, and those city are small. And this country is plural form of those, and country is masculine. A large and those city city is shuda is feminized plural form of those. When the speaker speaks about the those country and those city, they are speak about some countries very far from them. Not near, so we use the those in the agayos for the masculine, and those in the agayas for the feminines. 
So those countries are large and those cities are small. Aquellos países son grandes y aquellas ciudades son pequeñas. So when to use demonstrative adjectives? When to use them? Cuando usarlas? You use them before each noun. Este abogado y ese cliente. And cliente is the noun. Abogado is also the noun. And abogado is masculine. So we use este. And cliente is the masculine noun also. For the dead, we use ese. So it's the sentence, this lawyer and this client, este abogado y ese cliente. And we also use the adverbs to reinforce the location of the objects of the noun we are speaking. So this house here, esta casa, aquí. Casa is the feminized singular. For this, we use esta. Esta casa, aquí. Aquí means here. This house here. Esa casas, ahí. And casa is the plural form of feminized. For the dead, we use esa. So, those house there and ahí is there. And the adverb allá is over there. This means very far away. And the casa is feminized and singular form. For dead, which is far away, we are not using esa. We are using aquella. Aquella casa allá. That house over there is very far away from the speaker. So we are talking about feminized nouns and masculine nouns. And how can we separate or how can we know that this is a feminized or a masculine noun? So in Spanish, we have certain endings of the words a good indication as to the gender for the masculine or feminized designation of noun. For instance, the nouns end in O, except la mano, the hand, and la radios, the radio, often are masculine. It means that the noun is ending in O, often masculine, except some of the word. Nouns that end in A or AD for example, la ciudad, the city, and IE, la serie, the series, C-I-O-N with the accent on the O, la canción, the song, or S-I-O-N with the accent on the O, la discusión, the discussion. Ending in U-D, la salud, the health, and U-M-B-R-E, umbre, la costumbre. The custom generally are feminized. And this is the general rules of the masculine nouns and the feminine noun, but there are exceptions and you have to be looked out for this. And the rules for gender, certain nouns belong to a films are masculine. This include the number for the masculine noun, guado, el guado, the four, and the day of the week. For example, first day, we use masculine, the first day, el jueves. And the compass point, the north, el norte, and the east, el este, the south, el sur, and the west, el oeste. Name of the tree, for example, the apple tree, we use el for the masculine tree, el manzano. Some compound noun, for example, the, the pencil, sharpener is a compound noun this means we use something to shape the teeth of the pencil so el sacabunda the pencil sharpener and this is a compound noun so we use the masculine article el el sacabunda the pencil sharpener and the name of the levers the name of the lakes mountains straits and seas for example the Mediterranean, we use L, El Mediterraneo, the Mediterranean Sea. Certain nouns belong to a firm are feminized. This includes the many illness, la quibes, the foods, la appendicitis, the appendicitis. An appendicitis is an illness in which the 
appendix is in fact and painful and usually need to be removed in an operation. The islands and the province, for example, La Gosega, the Gosica. And Gosica is an island in the Mediterranean Sea and politically one of the 18th regions of France. So it belongs to France. It lies southeast of France mainland, west of the Italian. Some of the genders in Spanish noun, we call it reversing gender. Some Spanish nouns are tricky because they end in an A. Generally, end in A is feminized. But some of the words ending in A but are masculine. With others ending in O, generally is masculine, but some are feminized. And these are called the reversing gender. This noun may be referred to as reverse gender nouns. For instance, some nouns that end in M-A and E-T-A are masculine. And as are the words, El Diaz, the day, is masculine. And El Maba, the map, is masculine. And foreign table outline these masculine words for you to reference. For example, the ending in M-A, El Grima the climate, el drama, the drama, el idioma, the language, el poema, the poem, el problema, the problem, el programa, the program, el sistema, the system, el telegrama, the telegram, el dimma, the film, and the ending in EAT, el planeta, the planet. Some more reversing gender of Spanish noun, you have to be careful. La mano, the hand, is ending in O, but it is feminized. La radios, the radio, is ending in O, but it is feminized. La foto, la foto is ending in O, but it is feminized. But actually, it is the abbreviation of the la photographia. So it's also ending in A, and so it is feminized. La moto is ending in O, but it is feminized. Why? Because it is actually the abbreviation for la motocicleta, the motorcycle. So it's ending in A, so it is feminized. And both gender words. That means some of the noun have two gender. For example, in masculine and feminine. La artista, the artist, but it is a male artist. And la artista, the artist, the feminized artist. El dentista, la dentista, the dentist. El periodista, la periodista, the journalist. El telefonista, la telefonista, the operator. That means the telephone operator. El modelo, la modelo, the model. El joven, la joven, the youth. El estudiante, la estudiante, the student. And some of the words is always feminized. For example, persona is always feminized. The person, if you are talking about male or female person, this noun person is always feminized. The victim. No matter if it's male or female, la pistima, the victim. And some of the nouns in Spanish, if you use the different gender article for them, the meaning of the words will be different. For example, el capital, the capital. This is the money of your business, the capital of your business. And la capital is the capital of a country. So when you using la, it means the capital of the country. And if you are using el, it means the capital, the money of your business. El cura, the pieces. La cura, the curve. El fende, the fun. La fende, the forehead. El guía, the male guy. La guía, the female guy or the guidebook. El baba, the pop. La Baba, the potato. El Policia, the police officer. La Policia, the police force or the police woman.
and some of the special nuns like El Professor, the teacher, and La Professora. We add an A. This means the teacher is the female teacher. We are not changing this O to A, but after the R, we add an A to it. And Alphonse, the French person, La Francesa, is also the French person, but this is female. So we take out the essence in here and we add an A to here, make it from masculine to feminize. El Aleman, the German person. La Alemana, the German person, but this is female. We take out the accent here and we add an A to change from masculine to feminize. Of course, you must watch out for two exceptions to this rule. For example, el actor, the actor. And if you change to a female actress, we call it an actress. So we use the la actress. We change the words totally, not adding an A to the word to change it to feminize. El emperador, the emperor. La emperatriz, the female empress. That means the female emperor. Continue with the special nouns, masculine meaning and the feminine meaning. El héroe, the hero. La heroína, the heroine. El hombre, the man. La mujer, the woman. We change the word totally. El marido, the husband. La esposa, the wife. El príncipe, the prince. La princesa the princess, el rey, the king, la reina, the queen, el lleno, the son-in-law, la nuera, the daughter-in-law. And to prevent the catch of two vowel sounds, the Spanish language used the masculine singular article, el or un, with the feminine singular nouns that begin with a stress, a sound, a or a. For example, agua is actually is a feminized noun, but it begins with a stress a of the word, so we use el agua rather than la agua. But in plural form, we change it back to feminized articles. Las aguas, el abeer, the bird, las abeas, the birds, el hambre, the hunger. Las hambre, the hungers. And how we can form the plural forms of the nouns? You are asked to form the plurals of nouns ending in a vowel. For example, el mango, the mango. Los mangos, the mangoes. You add an S at the ending. La manzana, the apple. Las manzana, the apples we add an S to the end of the word. You also add ES to form the plural of nouns ending in a consonant, including Y. El emperador, the emperor. Los emperadores, the emperors. You add ES to the end of the word. El rey, the king. Los reyes, the kings. You ask yes, and also you change the sound e to yes. Los reyes, the king. And also you add or delete an accent mark in some nouns ending in n or s to maintain the original stress. For example, el examen. The stress is in sem. So you change it to borrow, you add yes but the stress have to be in here, so you add an essence on the top of the A, los examines, the test. La canción, las canciones, the songs. El francés, los franceses, the French. You take out the accent here, you also take out the accent from here. El inglés, los ingleses. You take out the accent from here, the Englishman. El Rimon, Los Rimones. You take out the accent from here, the lemons. 
and the noun, if it's ending in Z, you change the Z to C before you add an ES. La luz, the light, and the plural form should be las luces, the lights, and you change the Z here into C here. Noun just end in ES or IS, don't change in plural form, except for el mes, the month, and los meses, the month. El lunes is the Monday, and los lunes, Mondays. So you don't add any S or ES to the end because this is already ending in ES or IS. La crisis, the crisis, las crisis the crisis. And the compound nouns, the nouns composed of two nouns that's joined together to make one, don't change in the plural form. El abrata, the can opener. Because abre is open, latas is the can. So abrata is a compound noun, the can opener. Los abratas, the can openers. In English, we add an S to the opener, but in Spanish we don't add anything because it's actually a compound noun. We don't change anything in the plural form. You express the plurals of nouns of different genders where one noun is masculine and the other is feminized with the masculine plural. For example, el rey y la reina, the king and the queen, this is the singular form, so we use L and LA for the masculine and the feminine. But Los Reyes is the kings or the kings and some queen. That means the Reyes mean all of them are kings or some of them are kings and some of them are queen. The mixed gender, but you use the masculine gender for this plural form. El muchacho y la muchacha, the boy and the girl, is a singular form, so you use the feminized and the masculine articles. But when you are talking about all the boys or some boy and some girls, you use the muchachos. This is the plural form of the masculine, but it also represents some of them are masculine and some of them are feminized. So you use los muchachos. And some nouns are always plural, such as las gafas, the glass, or the las espejueros, the eye classes, las matemáticas, the mathematics, las vacaciones, the vacation, etc. And now we are talking about the processor, the rules of using de, of. You use the preposition de between a noun that's process and a proper noun representing the processor. For example, in English, you may say, it is Julio's car. And you use the apostrophe s, that means Julio's own this car. But in Spanish, you never speak in this form. You use of Julio's. Es el coche de Julio. It is the car of Julio's. You always use in this form the car of Julio's. This means the car is belong to Julio's. You never use the form in English, the Julio's car. And in Spanish, we have never have this form. You use the plus a definite article between the noun that's possessed and a common noun representing the processor. De contrast with the definite article L to form del of the. Before a masculine singular common noun, necesito el libro del profesor. I need the books of the teacher. That means I need the teacher's book. And in Spanish, you never say the teacher's book, you say the book of the teacher. Necesito el libro del profesor. I need the teacher's book. And if the sentence contains more than one processor, you need to repeat de 
before each noun. So the day of have to re repeat before each noun. Voy a la casa de Roberto y de Marta. I am going to Roberto's and mother's house. Voy a la casa de Roberto. I go to the house of the Roberto and the house of Marta. You use the contraction. That is the reverse of English to answer the question. De quien es? You use the reverse question mark here and the question mark end of the sentence. De quien es? Es la idea. Whose idea is it? In English, you use one question mark at the end of the sentence to represent the interrogative sentence. But in Spanish, you have to use a question mark at the end and a reverse question mark on at the beginning of the sentence. De quien es? Es la idea. Whose idea is it? Es la idea de Julia. Y el hermano de Julia. This is Julia's and her brother's idea. So, literally, so is the idea of Julia's and the ideas of the brothers of Julia's. You use a lot of of in Spanish. So, you get a lot of de in here. Es la idea de Julia y del hermano de Julia. This is Julia's and her brother's idea. So this is the end of this section. We will continue more in the next section. Thank you. Okay, if you think this video is good and can help you, please subscribe and give like. So you press the button at the lower right corner to subscribe. And remember, when I have a new videos, you better click the bell shaft and see the new video. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Again, thank you very much for listening to my tutorial videos. And if you need a private tutor for you to get a better mark or better score in your DSC examination in Hong Kong, the SAT examination, or just you want to improve your mathematics and English for your college and university study, please contact me at chingtom929 at yahoo.com.hk. My telephone number is plus one eight five two six five nine two eight six zero nine. 好多謝大家收聽我呢個 video。如果你係希望你個 mathematics 同埋你個英文係更加好嘅話咧，你想要一個 private tutor 啦，你可以隨時 contact 我嘅，令到你個 DSC exam 啦，或者你想考 SAT 啦，你亦都可以 contact 我，因為我都有一啲私人嘅補習喺呢一兩方面嘅。多謝大家 ，thank you， 拜拜 ，muchas gracias。